to over to oversee all work on London Bridge. In 1163, Peter of Colchurch, chaplain and warden of the bridge and its uh, brethren, supervised the bridge's last rebuilding in timber. In 1176 to 1209, Henry, King Henry II commissioned a new stone bridge in place of the old wooden one, and with a chapel at its center dedicated to Becket as martyr. The chapel of St. Thomas on the bridge became the official start of the pilgrimage to his shrine in Canterbury. In, in 1284, in exchange for loans to Edward I, the City of London acquired the charter for the maintenance of the bridge based on the duties and toll rights of the former Brethren of the Bridge. The bridge was 26 feet wide and about 800 to 900 feet long, supported by 19 irregularly spaced arches, arches founded on starlings, uh, and here's the bridge actually in Elizabethan times to give you some idea. Um, uh, founded on starlings, and starlings are those um, boat shaped um, uh, struts or um, islands in the river on which the bridge is built. It had a drawbridge to allow for the passage of tall ships and defensive gatehouses at both ends. By 1358, it was already crowded with 138 shops. In, in my mind, um, I have no idea how one gets the suddenly decides to build a shop on the bridge. I presumably you had to pay the, um, the city of London uh, for the right to build a, an independent shop on the bridge. Um, at least one two entrance, multi-seated public latrine overhang the, overhung the bridge parapets and discharged into the river below. So did an unknown number of private latrines reserved for bridge householders or shopkeepers and bridge officials. In 1382 to 83, a new latrine was built, or the, or the old, old one replaced at considerable cost at the northern edge of the bridge. It is amazing. I think now it is. It sounds as if it was easier to find public latrines then than it seems to be nowadays. Um. By the Tudor period, there were 200 buildings on the bridge, and that is the what you're seeing right there. Uh, some stood up to seven stories high, and some overhung the river by seven feet, and some under, un, underhung, overhung the road to form a dark tunnel through which all traffic had to pass. This, but this did not prevent the addition in 1577 of a palatial non-such house to the buildings that crowded the bridge, and that would be the, the fancy one in the centre. Um, the available roadway was just 12 feet wide, divided into two lanes, so that in each direction, carts, wagons, coaches, and pedestrians shared a single file lane six, just six feet wide. When the bridge was congested, crossing it could take up to an hour. The flow um, was further obstructed in the 16th century uh, by water wheels installed under the two north arches to drive water pumps and under the two south arches to power grain mills. The difference in water levels between the two sides of the bridge could be as much as six feet, producing ferocious rapids between the piers resembling a weir. Only the foolhardy attempted to shoot the bridge, steer a boat, steering a boat between the starlings when in flood and some were drowned in the, in the attempt. 
It is said that the bridge was for wise men to pass over and to fools to pass under. The Southern Gatehouse became the scene of one of most London's most notorious sites. And we can see some, we go back. Uh, Got to get, here we are. We are looking uh, here south to north. And you can see the Southern Gatehouse um, is on the bottom right hand corner. Um, and this Southern Gatehouse had a display of the severed heads of traitors impaled on pikes and dipped in tar and boiled to preserve them against the elements. The rebellious Scott William Wallace's head was thought to be the first to be pinned there. The leaders of the present revolt, Jack Cade's head ended up there as did those of Catholic martyrs, Thomas More and Bishop John Fisher, the Protestant reformer, uh, Thomas Cromwell. In 1598, a German visitor to London counted over 30 heads on iron spikes at the south end of the bridge. So there is the bridge in the early 1600s. And now you can see by this time, this is 1643. Now we have um, a considerable development, not only on the north in the city uh, there, but also on the south side. So we come now to 1666, the Great Fire of London first destroyed the bridge's water wheels, preventing them from pumping water to fight the fire and then burned one, th one third of the houses on the bridge. A gap in the building left by a previous fire in 1633 prevented the destruction of the rest. By 1710, there's 1682, so you can still see um, most of the houses there. It looks as if some on the north side might have been replaced by much smaller houses. Uh, the, the Grand Mansion, there you can see in the center. Okay, and here we see the, the rapids. This is a downstream version. And as was pointed out, when, the, when you had flood tide, the water could be six feet higher, one side of the bridge to the other. And uh, as a result, the water just shot through. And here's a couple of pictures, um, which given the headgear I decided had to be in the 1700s. Um, but you can see there the difficulty of the traffic over the, the bridge uh, because it was so narrow. Um, because of the presence of the houses. And there's a, an imaginary picture there of a boat shooting the rapids uh, from one side of the bridge to the other. And of course, this, um, this, these rapids would change twice a day, whether it was an incoming tide or an outgoing tide. And it would, these rapids um, would be in the middle of the tidal change would be the, the maximum. At high water and low water, then the, the water levels would be on the same on both sides of the bridge. Okay. Uh, by 1710, most of the houses on the bridge had been rebuilt in the restoration style. And in order to widen the roadway to 20 feet, the new houses were built overhanging the river, supported by wooden girders and struts, that hid the tops of the arches. And I think there you, there you have that. You can see the way that the, uh, the there are diagonal girders there supporting the, the outside edge of the houses, uh, thus increasing the road width. In, in 1722, congestion, however, became so serious that the Lord Mayor decreed that all carts, coaches, and other carriages coming out of Southwark into the city 
should keep to the west side of the said bridge and are all carts and coaches going out of the city to keep along the east side of the said bridge. Um, so in other words, they were driving now on the uh, left-hand side because if you if you look at the bridge going north from the southern bank to the northern bank, they are told to keep on the west side, which would be the left side of the bridge. Um, it is said that this is the basis for uh, traffic in Britain driving on the left. So it's this... Um, this act of, uh, of what the Lord Mayor declared in 1722, essentially keep to the left. And um, uh, this order to keep traffic to the left on the bridge was later incorporated into the Highway Act, the British Highway Act of 1835. In other words, drive on the left in British roads. And this was also adopted throughout the British Empire. Um, because uh, 1835 would be uh, the start of the height of the British Empire in Victorian times. In 1856, the London Bridge Act gave the corporation uh, the power to purchase all the properties on the bridge so that they could be demolished and the bridge improved. So from the middle of the 1700s, Oh, there's again a picture of the overhanging structures, as you can see, a painting there. And there is the bridge uh, with all the structures removed uh, following um, the Act of 1756. So in one fell swoop, we've changed from a Tudor-looking bridge to a much more um, modern looking bridge. But at this point, um, by the, by the uh, middle 1700s, the bridge was in constant need of constant repairs and this weakened construction resulted in public pressure for a modern replacement. But that didn't quite happen for quite a few years. But nonetheless, um, this led to the song um, about London Bridge. So I'm just going to give you that. Um, uh, somewhere or other here, I should have this ability to Okay, we're going to go back to this, and then we're going to go slide share. Uh, ba -do -ba -do. Screen, here we go. Uh, share. And there should be... Um, Ah, uh, there should be somewhere an ability. Okay, back we go. Wow. Oh. Video. I'm trying to get it back to full screen so I can see the commands. But I don't. Sorry about this. Let's go zoom. Okay.
Well, I cannot see my screen, unfortunately. What I see is uh, uh, the song, kids' songs, flash apps. Yeah, that's right, but I... Um, I should be able to but somewhere on the I should be able to get the sound to play but I cannot Yeah I'm pressing on the arrow but it's not playing Oh wait a minute share sound try that Peter, we could sing it. Yeah, we could. <laughs> Can you hear that or not? Uh, yeah, I, I did. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. It up with sticks and stones, sticks and stones, sticks and stones. Build it up with sticks and stones, my fair lady. Sticks and stones will all fall down, all fall down, all fall down. Sticks and stones will all fall down, my fair lady. Build it up with wood and clay. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> Stop share. Okay, so where did this... Ah, now I've got the proper screen. Okay. Um, so... So... Um, that, as I said, that song derives from the 1700s um, because of the fact that the bridge was in such bad condition that uh, it they, they were spending so much money on the bridge that um, they decided that it had to be replaced. Um, the creation of the great arch in the center had uh, weakened the rest of the structure and required constant uh, repairs. And combined with congestion, both on and under the bridge, often leading to fatal, fatal accidents, this resulted in public pressure for a modern replacement. So there's the old one. And here now is the map uh, of where we are. And by 1796, there were now uh, some other bridges. Here is London Bridge, but there are now other bridges appearing. So it's, uh, it's Westminster and Blackfriars Bridge. So the need for a new bridge um, uh, what well, was essential, there were other bridges that would cross the river while this uh, replacement was being made. Peter, can you point out where Tower Bridge would have been? Um, yeah, hold on. I got to move everybody's picture. Oh, 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 no, I, I'm sorry. We can do that later then. I Here we are. Can you, do you see my arrows? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, that's where Tower Bridge is. Because here's the Tower Bridge. Oh, here's the tower oh there, here it is. And Tower Bridge is right next to the Tower of London. Tower Bridge is not there yet um, because Tower Bridge was built in the Victorian era. Uh -huh. And uh, did anybody notice a problem with that little video of the kids' song? Because you're all muted, but it's fa fairly obvious they were not showing Tower Bridge. They were show they were not showing London Bridge, which was the bridge falling down. They were showing Tower Bridge, 
which uh, which is uh, that uh, what a lot of people think London Bridge is, which it is not. It is uh, considerably upstream, as you see here. I don't know what the scale of this is, but that's certainly a quarter of a mile or so upstream of uh, where Tower Bridge is. So um, in 1799, a competition was opened to design a replacement for the medieval bridge. It's amazing that bridge had lasted um, uh, since uh, 12,009. So that is 600 years. I think, don't think there are many bridges that last uh, that amount of time. Um, so uh, a, a conventional style of five stone arches by an architect, John Rennie, was chosen and it, it opened in 1831. And here's, there's the old bridge, um, uh, which was, they claim there, the 1832 uh, drawing. And I do see still it being used. Um, and here now is a picture in 1832, uh, where you see John Rennie's bridge, the new bridge on the left, and the old bridge on the right, and it has been taken down, demolished. The, the new bridge obviously has no houses on the top, and the arches are considerably wider uh, removing the rapids which uh, existed under under the old bridge. Here's another picture of the Rennie Bridge. I'm not sure uh, that was the timeline that I got on that uh, photograph, that picture. But as it didn't open till 1831, I think the, the it's slightly off. Um. Actually, looking at that, that's the old bridge. So I have that that out of order. Yeah, that's the old bridge, and you can see a bit of the flow there. So we need to reverse these. That's the old one. That's the new one. You can tell the difference because the arches on the old one are Gothic arches, uh, except for this center span. And the new one is all these rounded arches. So here is a map of the, the, the city in 1851. And as we've already learned, it has now considerably expanded. Here's the original city wall. Um, and uh, here's the Tower of London. And here is London Bridge, if you can see my arrow just moving back and forth. 1851, we still don't have Tower Bridge. There is no bridge at that point yet. And here is just an enlargement. Here's a picture of uh, London from the south in 18... I'll have to move in 1861. And now you can see the development starting on the southern bank, but a lot of it is actually still fields here in 1861. And the, the, here's Westminster. If you, here's uh, St. Paul's. And I'm trying to just, so this is London Bridge. And I don't see the tower, but it should be somewhere around here. So by the end of the 19th century, uh, this was one of the busiest points in London and one of the most congested. 8,000 pedestrians and 900 vehicles crossed every hour. And it was widened by 13 feet using using granite corbels, as you see there. That's these. Um, and subsequent surveys showed that the bridge was sinking an inch every eight years. 
And by 1924, the east side of the bridge had sunk three to four inches lower than the west side. Um, and, and at that point, it was decided that the new London Bridge, new at that time, the Rennie Bridge, had to be removed and replaced. But nothing happened for quite a time. And of course, the Second World War intervened. So the, the London City Council convened after the war and decided that they had to do something about building a new bridge. And the new bridge was uh, built from 1967 to 1972. And it was opened by Elizabeth II on the 17th of March, 1973. Um, So here's, here's the, I'm slightly out of order. Here's the picture in 1908. So but here's London Bridge. We now have Waterloo, um, oh, London Bridge Station there. So we see train lines uh, all over the place here, these black lines. This is the London Dock. Um, and these are more docks over here. Here is the London Bridge. And here is Tower Bridge, right next to the Tower of London. Okay. Ah. Oh, there we are. That's what I wanted. And here is the the new London Bridge that was opened in 1973. It comprises three strands, uh, three spans of pre pre-stressed concrete box girders, a total of 928 feet long. It cost four million pounds. Sounds like a bargain to me, which would it be equivalent to something like uh, 60 or 70 million now, which shows we've had an inflation in just that period of time. Uh, which is 50 years uh, of something like, um, oh, ten, tenfold, more than tenfold. And the cost was met entirely by the Bridge Estates Charity. The current bridge was built on exactly the same location as Rennie's Bridge. In 1967, Council member, London Council member Ivan Ludkin had put forward an, the idea of selling the bridge and recalled, they all thought I was completely crazy when I suggested that we should sell London Bridge when it needed replacing. And on April the 18th, 1968, so that's only a year later, uh, Rennie's Bridge was purchased by the Missisurian entrepreneur Robert um, P. McCulloch of McCulloch Oil, and he bought it for uh, two dollars $2,460,000. So um, Here is a view of London Bridge uh, on the bridge facing south in 2016. And you can now see the this is a much, much wider bridge. At the end of the bridge, there is this spike. Uh, and um, it was, it, there have been various opinions of what this spike is. Um, and some saying that it, oh, it was recalled the, the Tudor era spikes on which heads were um, pos positioned. But when the architect was asked, he said, no, no, no. This spike points down at a particular angle. And when you get to the point where it hits the river, that is the actual place of the original 12,000. Um, 1,207 uh, London Bridge. So there is a tradition at the present time 
of, uh, and I think um, uh, Deb mentioned this, of driving the right to drive sheep across the bridge. And like many ancient rights in Britain, this is maintained, otherwise the right disappears. Uh, not that many farmers use it these days, but so once a year, there is an annual sheep drive organized by the Worshipful Company of Woolman, which is London's oldest livery company, and they drive sheep across the bridge, normally with some personality assisting them there in the center, and I don't have a record of who that is. Here is um, London uh, as it is seen today. So uh, this is from the east. And so here you see, here's the Tower of London, if you can see my arrow going round. Here is London Bridge with the three arches. And there are several other bridges of uh, as you go round, right up here is the Palace of Westminster or the Houses of Commons, and Big Ben is just where I'm moving my arrow there. So what happened to London Bridge? Well, McCulloch uh, dismantled it step, stone by stone and transported it to... Uh, Lake, Lake, uh, Lake Havisham, something like that. I may have the name wrong because it's not in my notes. It's Havasu, Havasu. Havasu, thank you. Lake Havasu in Arizona, uh, where it has been re reassembled over, an, I believe, an artificial lake, as uh, typically happens in, um, in Arizona. And... Um, there, oh, there I do have the name. And there is the bridge spanning the lake at Lake Havasu City in 2003. Uh, various wits have suggested that he was duped uh, into buying this bridge, that he thought that he was buying Tower Bridge, um, because that is the most iconic bridge in London at the present time. Uh, he he claims that no, he wasn't duped. He knew what he was buying. But I'm sure if he paid uh, over two million for it, it cost him probably several times that amount, even in the 1970s, to move that bridge to Arizona and rebuild it in Arizona. But there it is, the old Rennes Bridge, the bridge that was opened in 1831. This is not the medieval bridge, and this bridge only stood for 140 years versus 600 for the old bridge. We wait to see what happens with the new bridge. And so I'm just to finish off, I've got a few pictures of Tower Bridge, which is the what most people now recognize as London. And um, Deb last time explained that you can climb those towers and you can walk across the bridge at the top. Very, um, when it was built, many more ships came up the Thames than is now the case. So there are some, and it is, uh, powered by huge counterweights in the towers. And there's the main thing it's likely to go up for a sailing training ship because most of the larger ships, they don't even come up anywhere near to London anymore. They uh, they dock um, either somewhere totally different on the, the coast or much further down the Thames. I rather like that one. There it is, uh, Tower Bridge at night. And there's the machine room. Now, there was something I skipped over. In Peter, Peter, can yeah? I ask? The, the, the two towers on the Tower Bridge, are, is the machinery in there or, are, or is there a room in there? 
Well, the machinery, it, it, the machinery is on the lower level. Okay. And then above that, there are certainly rooms upstairs. Maybe Deb, I've never been in it. Deb's um, can comment on that. Okay, so a little bit about the current situation around London Bridge. This is a map of the current situation in um, in London. So here is the city and Tower Bridge would be exactly where the, the end of that arrow hits um, hits the, the, the river. So this is the original, well, this is the river. The areas in blue are the areas which are dangerously low. And what has happened over the years is the river has been enclosed in embankments. There's, uh, I was looking at a Wikipedia article about these embankments, and even historians over hundreds of years seem to, not to know how these embankments got there. Um, there, are, there are some, you know, in the 300 years ago were hypothesizing that the Romans put these embankments. But the, I think the answer is the embankments were totally added to, added to, added to. And um, they, then they were uh, seriously improved or extended by uh, in the Victorian era, giving us our modern embankments. So the river where it used to flow maybe over five miles of marshlands on each side is now rather like a canal in the center of London. So there is a considerable rise and fall of the tide in the city, probably more than in ancient times because it used to flow in and then flow sideways and now it does not. Um, the, the rise and fall at the, the spring, the normal spring tide at London Bridge is now 22 feet, um, which, which is a pretty high rise and fall, uh, it, considering if you go down to, let's say, the Connecticut coast, your rise and fall there is three feet. Um, at times, and a very high spring tide, uh, the the water does overflow the embankment. And with global warming and the rise of sea levels, this danger is increasing. So if we look at the map now, here is the city. So there are now three barriers that lower uh, when a high tide is expected, it will be a high tide associated with an east wind, blowing the wind, uh, the water up this funnel that is the entry to the Thames. So there are now barriers where at these three points, Dartford, Barking, and one called the Thames Barrier, in order to protect the city of London. There's, there's what it looked like in Victorian times at low tide. And you see, uh, um, let's see, that is actually Blackfriars Bridge, not uh, London Bridge, but very similar sort of design. Here's what it looks like at low tide. And, um, and so these are old warehouses, which have largely, this would be downstream of Tower Bridge um, which have become uh, in, turned into upscale, gentrified apartments. But still, here's, here's the size of the embankment, and it doesn't take much more to flow into these lower areas. Here's the normal high tide marked by the green line. So you only have a few feet there that uh, with... with um, rise of sea levels, they are going to need these uh, barriers. Um, here's another view. And uh, that again is, I think, Blackfriars. Here's a pedestrian bridge across the Thames. But here is a, 
a favorite occupation of some Londoners at low tide to see what they can find in the mud. Um, way back, she's about 2002, uh, they were preparing for the Oxford and Cambridge boat race and the um, the Cambridge boat collided, I think, with a motorboat. I don't think it was, and broke one of its oars. And my uh, my son was in um, London a bit later that spring, early summer, and was walking along the embankment. Uh, it's considerably upstream of Westminster, and he saw something light blue on the mud and ran down and got it and it was the broken Cambridge boat oar and that was one of his rowing trophies for many years. Okay, that's uh, that's all I have to say. So I hope you found some of these little facts of interest to um, further what Deb has been telling us uh, of this. Um, oh, here we are. Deb says the buildings on the bridge were, were rented out to pay for maintenance of the bridge. And um, and says the base of each tower holds the, um, the this is tower bridge, the base of each tower holds the mechanisms to lift the bridge up for passing brokes. The South Tower has a blue, uh, viewing room where they play videos showing the history of the bridge. There are displays in both towers and the North Tower has a large um, lounge available for private rentals. So there we are, we can rent it when we go back to London. <laughs> Okay. Stop share. All right. Thank you for listening. Very and nice. Very, very great. Great job, Peter. Very interesting. Lots uh, of great images. I liked all your images. Oh, uh, well, I, I, some of those I already had. Some of them I got from what the, the London Bridge Museum site, but they were lacking in information, many of them. Mm -hmm. um, no, so, so Yes, but Peter, are are these um toll bridges? No. So no. okay, and and that does keep traffic flowing to some extent then. Um, well, there's the traffic. Most of the traffic is there are some barges that go up, and they would be lower than the bridges. Um. The tall sailing ships will go through Tower Bridge and then more between Tower Bridge and London Bridge. They can't go any further. And but I, I actually was referring to the cars. You know, d d oh, no, 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 no. <clears throat> they, are not, they are not toll bridges, no. Right. I was thinking you had to pay to go under them. Yeah, well, oh. actually, you know, that, that probably does exist as a payment somewhere. Well, um, <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're not toll bridges, but London now has a charge if you take your car into London. And there is no toll gate like there used to be on old bridges. They simply have cameras. And if you drive your car into central London uh, during a normal day, uh, you get charged. I suspect it's 25 pounds, do you know? I don't yeah. know the exact amount, but yeah, they have congestion charges and it depends yeah. on, and they've just expanded the area, which was kind of controversial. So it depends on what part of London you're driving in, what part of, what time of day you're driving in. Yeah. Um, the charges are different, but yeah, they take a picture of your um, license plate and you get a, you get a charge, a congestion That's, charge. Some That's your... what cities have to do now. <laughs> yeah. And some, some cities in Europe, oh, I've lived in one in Italy, which didn't charge you, but sent you a fine. If yeah, you Florence will do that. Florence is yeah, doing Bologna was right. doing that. And I, I accidentally drove a rental car in and I thought, oh no, <laughs> I found myself surrounded by taxes and that was all. That was in Bologna. 
so as I gather it, London, you can drive in and if you want to pay for it, you you can do it, but you will receive a a bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, another thing about the about London Bridge and Nonsuch House that you mentioned, um, that was actually a prefabricated house that they shipped over from the Netherlands. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. They I don't know. know There's that. no they don't know who bought it, why it why that happened. But it was actually a prefabricated house that was shipped over from the Netherlands. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, Deb, when are we going to hear your gardens talk now? When is that? That will start. Let me look at the map. It it